Welcome to this podcast review for December 12, 2023, and I'm J.D. Duran. And I'm Brendan Cassidy. Thanks for joining us, everybody, where we are going to finish off the week with the review of Fallen Leaves. <laughs> oh, you are such a dad. You are yeah. such a dad. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Those leaves are falling now after that joke. <laughs> Those leaves were low-hanging fruit. <laughs> and I had to take them. Yeah, it wasn't even fruit. It's just paper. <laughs> yeah. So I apologize in advance for offending everybody with a little dumb joke there. But Yeah, um, if we have any listeners in Finland right now, they probably just turned this podcast yeah. off. I know, because they've heard that about a million and six times. Ha, ha, ha. You're so yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just it. lost all of our credibility. Hopefully, Look, we make up We make up for it by talking about a movie that actually deserves to be talked about. Yeah, exactly. Again, I'm not denying that it was low-hanging fruit. It was. <laughs> but I had to take that, it You anyway. know, to be fair, that is why you said it so sarcastically. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I am... In all seriousness, though, looking forward to talking about this movie, Fallen Leaves, that is the Finnish German romantic comedy mm -hmm. that premiered over at the Cannes Film Festival, where it yeah. competed for the Palme d'Or, and it won the jury prize, which is exciting. That's true. Yeah, it did. So we're going to get into this Finnish film, which is also the finish entry for best international feature at the right. academy awards as well mm -hmm. so it is notable in that regard shall we jump right into this oh let's do this let's do okay, this okay here we go i apologize in advance for absolutely butchering these names but this is why i'm so here. glad jd is leading this conversation <laughs> it is written and directed by aki kurismaki it stars Alma Poisty, Lucy Vatanen, Jan Hetainen, and a few others that come and go throughout the film, but those are mostly the uh, characters we're going to be focusing on here for this conversation. Yeah. Who's the stray it, dog? The stray, is, oh, is the so, stray. Yes, I actually have that written here. Okay, okay. Alma the dog as Chaplin the dog. That is Love. the official oh, listing there. That's that warms my heart because my wife Maris and I have been talking about getting a dog for so long, and I always say I want to name it Chaplin. I, 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 I yeah. So this movie is singing to me right now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fallen Leaves in modern day Helsinki, two lonely souls in search of love meet by chance in a karaoke bar. However, their path to happiness is beset by obstacles from lost phone numbers to mistaken addresses, alcoholism, and the aforementioned charming stray dog. Yep. Chaplin here. What a synopsis. Right. That synopsis right there was like, I got to watch this movie. Oh, this, this is a Brendan movie through and through. Yeah, it's something. We're going to talk about it. Brendan, what did you think about Fallen leaves well, like i said with that synopsis this is a brendan movie through and through and after watching it this is a brendan movie through and through All um right. it's 81 minutes long it's a very brief film in fact with end credits this is probably more like a 77 or 78 minute it's movie. A brief experience yes <laughs> yeah like, like if a you come out of it one might say yeah oh it's yeah well said well said my friend uh, it's one of those movies if you come out of it saying i didn't understand what happened you didn't watch it like it's just like it's it's <laughs> We, we we talk about universal stories. This is one of those. It's one of like like this is everybody's experience. Uh, 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 the way it portrays Helsinki, first of all, like it, this must be the loneliest place on earth. <laughs> it, oh, it, it I just, have thoughts. It oh, it man. is. It, everyone just looks so sad and mopey. It's like that's where the film's comedic sarcasm really comes from. Is sort of that mopiness and trying to find that sense of hope 
among a world that feels almost hopeless and it plays into that hopelessness almost like a joke which i really appreciated uh, lingering in the background are these radio telecasts of the of the current war in ukraine uh, so that's that that adds a timeliness to this movie for sure but also the hopelessness given perhaps the close proximity of Finland when compared to that war, as opposed to us here in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I like that the film geographically is getting into that as well. And just as a simple romance, I think it's a very endearing film. Uh, the, uh, the, the lead actress here of Alma Poisty, we talked about this during episode 564 JD with regard to the golden globe nominations. Yeah, Not she got only, nominated. She yeah. got like, that's actually a pretty surprising nomination for the golden yeah. globes. Uh, that's, yeah. that's really great. And I actually do think she gives one of the best performances of the year. Uh, there, there is so much that's kind of unsaid about, uh, about that character that she's playing yet. It's so emotive by not expressing really anything I, I just I, I love how this movie taps into that. The last thing I'll say, and then I'll toss it back to you, is you know, given this movie's structure, the romanticism of it all, the the fact that it is about these two lonely, unmatched people, there are moments where it clearly wears its influences on its sleeve, its references on its sleeve. Uh, you might think of Brief Encounter, for instance. Mm -hmm. That movie's in the background, quite literally, at one point in this movie. Yes, yes, it but of, is. But of all movies to reference so directly and head on, <laughs> I, I don't even know if talk I, about it. I don't even gonna, know if I want to say it because I kind of just want to save that for you to bring up that reveal for those who oh haven't seen gosh. this movie. It's, uh, it, it is perhaps the funniest moment of the entire year. Oh my year. gosh, it yeah. is incredible. I. I I think this is one of my favorite films of the year. It, it, it wow, and I, okay. I just I love the simplicity of it. Like these are the kinds of movies I just latch on to that feel like there's conflict without it being about conflict. You know, like yeah. conflict resolves very organically and naturally. It's a very simple story, and I just love movies that do this. Uh, I I, it, I found it very warm and inviting. It's almost like your Finnish city lights. That's. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought about with this film. That's, and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's yeah, a fusion between um City Lights and A Dog's Life. Yeah. Yeah. And Brief Encounter, another movie you love that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, no wonder the dog's film, name is Chaplin. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying the Chaplin sensibilities are are very much there. I'm with you. This is such a fascinating film. I also yeah. really like this a lot. It is very funny. Very, yeah. very funny. It's dry sensibilities would make Jim Jarmusch extremely <laughs> proud. So extremely proud. My oh my, is this a film that reveres Jarmusch's dry comedy? And yeah. yes, you noted it. There's a moment where these two characters go to the cinema and what is revealed there is a Jim Jarmusch film. Can we say what it is or should we just leave it? I don't even know if we should reveal the movie. I don't think we should reveal it. it, it it's a Jim Jarmusch film. I'll leave it at that. I was howling. <laughs> I was dying. I was but, on the floor. But it's, it's not even Guttural just... laughter. It's not even just the choice of Jarmusch film. It's the conversation that Ansa and Halapa <laughs> have about it. This genuine yes. conversation yes. about the movie. <laughs> this is a movie where... The characters invoke why that film is great. They agree with me. And I feel absolutely elated about it. And you feel validated. Yeah. Feel it's validated. Nice. It's exactly. nice that a very a very well regarded movie is able to validate your feelings, right? That was maybe the best the the joke itself is hilarious. The fact that they're watching that movie. Yeah, but also the uh, the immediate aftermath of it, where they're like, "Yeah, that was very good. I liked it a lot." I'm like, me too. <laughs> yes, thank God, I'm not alone. Oh, it's so yeah, good. That's great. That's so good. But yes, the Jarmusch sensibilities are very high. This is this is a very very dry, humorous movie. The mm -hmm. deadpan line delivery in this film had me in stitches. The music is really great as well and it's not just yeah. the song choices but the implementation of them because 
they're essentially literal interpretations of what's happening in the scene. Oh, this is a Kurt, musical. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say that this is a musical. And I, I just I love that editing because Kurzmaki may as well have drawn a thought bubble above the characters with the lyrics in the bubbles expressing yeah. the thoughts yeah. because that's a, pretty much what's it, happening. It does kind of have a, it does have a comic strip like tone to it, yeah. doesn't it? And it, 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 it's something that could go over the heads of certain people. You know, if you're not ready for this kind of mo- movie or if you're not really on that type of dry comedic wavelength, right? Like you might just see this as a tender drama. And for the most part, it is still j- just that, but just two characters sitting next to each other, not saying a word is somehow funny here. I, oh, it's, it's, it's really yeah. great. Yeah. I, I love it. It perhaps it's, you know, because I love dry comedies, which is why I love Jarmusch films, especially the one they invoke here in this film. Mm-hmm. And this is doing a lot of the same thing, but yeah, it's even the music is a big part of it as well. The transitions from diegetic to non-diegetic is also remarkable in all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe most fascinating about this film, though, and I'm excited to dive into this, is this polarity between aesthetic and setting. This is a story that takes place in modern-day Helsinki. We know this not just because of the synopsis that tells us that, But as you noted, throughout the film, we hear radio broadcasts talking about the war happening right now in Ukraine. Yeah. But on the flip side of that coin, the aesthetics and cinematography seem to evoke a very different place in time. If you simply judge this film on its visuals, you'd almost think this takes place in the 1960s. I was just going to say. I think that's very intentional given the film's ideas on the working class and how destitute these characters are. It's almost as if they are forced to live in a bygone era because they can't afford modern conveniences. So what Mm -hmm. we see here are two characters, one of them essentially homeless with nothing but a jacket and a bottle of booze, while Ansa does have an apartment, but all she has are a few dishes and a radio. She's living a life that one would experience in 1952, despite the fact that this is actually 2023. And how that comes through in the aesthetics is incredibly astute. It clever. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Freaking tastic. But underneath that cleverly executed commentary is something really cheeky and comical. And as you noted, very adorable. The romance here. Is oh, it's so cute. It's out. so cute. It's I just want to see a sequel to this film. movie so bad. I want to see these characters it again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just talked about this with American fiction, how the film gets to have its cake and eat it too with its commentary and what we see in terms of its on the surface plotting and drama. This mm-hmm. is the exact same. I think yeah. it absolutely gets to have its cake and eat it too. I think that commentary is brilliant but it functions so wonderfully as this dry comedy romance film. It's just stunning stuff. And I think that's why I responded to it so warmly is because my my experience watching it, and just as the end credits started to starting to roll, I found it very lovely. Like like that was my initial response is that this is just a very lovely film, and I just love these characters so much. But it does have so much replay value. You could replay this as this weird comedy of sorts and all that stuff is there on initial viewing, but some of it's kind of hidden because it is so black at times. Uh, And I think you're absolutely right about the film's sense of place, the way it takes advantage of that, the way director Aki, I'm always going to mispronounce his name. Aki Kurosmaki plays with that. That's why I said Helsinki feels like the loneliest place on earth. He's depicting it in a very certain way that might not even be truthful to real life. Like it might actually be a fun place to visit. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, I, I, it might, it might be a fun place to visit. I honestly don't know. I doubt that I would go to some bar in Helsinki and everyone there is just moping and sitting in their booths and not saying a word to each other, just waiting to sing karaoke. And that's the only words you hear anyone utter in that bar. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it, it it almost feels kind of cult like <laughs> at times, uh, very static, which is probably where those old fashioned vibes are coming from that you're talking about. Like it almost feels very 
working class, like you said. Uh, and, and maybe that makes the movie all the more relatable because I feel like a lot of us can maybe we at least know people that perhaps come from that working class background. So I do mm -hmm. like that the film has that universality to it. Um, it, it's, it's one I just can't wait to rewatch, rewatch again. I, I mm -hmm. don't know if this was the case for you. This was actually admittedly my first film from Aki Kurosaki. I believe uh, I, that is the same with me as well. And yeah. I know a lot of his films. Like I've heard of a man without a past, uh, or the man without a past rather, I've heard of The Other Side of Hope, which was not too long ago. That was 2017, maybe even 2018 when we did this for the States. Uh, so that's a fairly recent film. I, I've heard mm -hmm. of all these movies, and I know they're well-regarded, but I admittedly haven't seen any of them. Uh, th this was my first experience, and I can't wait to go back and rewatch some of these, or yeah. watch them for the first time, rather. I, I think I actually did see... La Havre. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Yeah, I don't think 11. I've seen that one either. Again, it's another one yeah. I've heard of, and I've heard great I, things I'm, about all of these. I do think that I've seen that one. But yeah, this is just my second film of his that I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, I'm not too familiar with him, and I, I agree with you. I really love this film as a comedy. It's really fantastic. We noted the cinema scene earlier, one of my other favorite moments in this film and I'll be vague here, but there's a moment where Ansa has to go to the hospital mm -hmm. and the attendants there ask her who she's there to see. All she has is a last name. I don't know his first name. <laughs> okay. Well, who it's are you? And she says, I'm his sister, <laughs> which the film doesn't point out that irony, but it is so funny. <laughs> it's, it's so great. And, but, but it's like a, the reaction shot from the nurse. Like yeah, that's what sells stunned. it. She's just like, yeah. like, you know what she's thinking at the moment because uh, it's it, that irony is striking there. It's, and yeah. it's, yeah, it's hilarious. It's, it's almost as if it's the one moment of this movie that it's, kind of aware of its melodrama and it actually yeah. plays it up as a joke like that that's the one moment where i feel like the circumstances of why uh aunts is going to the hospital is the one moment where it could almost seem like okay this seems kind of melodramatic but the film still maintains its comedic tone it doesn't ever Very shed so. that which is which is what i appreciate about it and it becomes kind of a it doesn't turn into conflict, right any yeah. other movie would turn that into conflict or some type of obstacle that needs to be overcome that's not what happens here at all. It's I mean, just... it's a slight obstacle in the sense of this romance that's trying to form but can't yeah. because of all of these yeah. various obstacles. But you're yeah. right that the stakes of it are immediately subverted. Yeah. And not just that moment, but in the next scene, she goes to read a magazine to him because the nurses tell her that if you read, it will help him. So mm -hmm. she starts reading this magazine, but it's one of those uh, like gossip magazines or one of those tabloids. And she yeah. starts reading the first article and it's about like a man like murdering and chopping up. <laughs> <It's just laughs> like, hilarious how she just immediately puts it away when she starts to understand what she's reading to him. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just I love how the film never loses sight, even when the stakes are that high. She never, or the film never loses sight of this film as a comedy. And, mm -hmm. and again, it's, I almost feel like we're doing it a disservice because we're laughing at it. But the film, we cannot emphasize again how dry it is. The film just delivers that as deadpan as possible, well, but it is yeah. really funny. That's why I want to watch the film again. And thankfully, it's only 80 minutes long, so it's easy <laughs> to squeeze this one back in. Um, it, it, because there are moments where I know I didn't laugh because I found myself thinking, that was kind of awkward. I think it's supposed to be awkward, but I might I might be able to find the comedy in it again if I'm in the right mood. And that's not mm -hmm. a criticism of the movie. That's honestly a praise of the movie because yeah. good dry comedy knows how to keep pulling you back in uh, because every moment is meant to be it's it, it's not meant to be immediately comedic sometimes. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's kind of meant to be a little cryptic, a little weird, a little dry. And this film does play into that awkwardness fairly well. I think one of my favorite moments is when Ansa and her two friends at the grocery store all quit their jobs together. <laughs> like, oh, like, that's a great moment. Too, that's a yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, and just the way that the security guard is constantly eyeing her 
for quote unquote doing something wrong despite her circumstances. So there's a lot of debate there to be had. But like, like yeah. just the dynamic between characters is a joy. This movie just made me happy. This movie just made yeah. me feel happy. Yeah. And it's it's a very joyous experience. And and that's the thing. Like it's characters almost live in an alternate reality, which also tethers to the film's aesthetics and cinematography mm-hmm. because it does good point. seem to invoke this alternate setting. To me, as I noted earlier, I kind of interp- interpret the film as this commentary on the disparity between the modern age and modern conveniences that are, you know, that, that make living life in the modern age great. I mean, mm-hmm. such as being able to record a podcast or having a television, you know, getting our news that way and not just on an old radio yeah. broadcast, you know. Yeah. We we can live in houses or apartments that actually feel like it's twenty twenty three. It's yeah it's, instead it's, of nineteen fifty two. It's like even despite the lack of technology depicted in this world, the world of the movie, it still conveys a hopeless world. Right. Uh, yeah. we constantly feel that through technology these days the media and how that's conveyed now uh and even the lack of that technology creating this hopeless world it's this universality of still finding ways to find hope within it uh, it's 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 a joyful message yeah. it's and i feel like that's another thing that the film is getting at really well well and that's ultimately where i was going to go with that as well because you could in have the same and you can share the same interpretation as me but even if you just wanted to look at it through the prism of some sort of alternate reality. Mm-hmm. It is like these characters kind of function like they're from a different universe, you know, and they almost feel like aliens at times. Yeah, they, they really do. They feel yeah. a little alienated, but maybe that's also part of the commentary here. The fact yeah. that these destitute characters that are, lacking privilege because of their circumstances. They can't indulge in the modern landscape as we can. And Mm -hmm. that does alienate them from the world a little bit. So perhaps that's a part of it. But to your point at the end of it, it's about characters coming together, finding joy, finding peace or, or, something new about themselves. I think that's, what's interesting about yeah. this from uh, the, uh, the perspective of H- H- Halapa. Is that how you say that character's name? Uh, uh, Hala- I character? think it's Halapa. Yeah. Halapa. Uh, Halapa. I think it's Halapa. So what's interesting. So both of these characters are working class mm-hmm. and Ansa, we come to see just, she simply doesn't have much opportunity. She does have an apartment. Right. There's not much to it, as we noted earlier. The difference between the two, though, is Halapa is making his own situation worse because of his alcoholism. Yeah. So yeah. you have two characters who are feeling hopeless. They're a part of this destitute world, and yet they're able to find connection and togetherness that on its own is great. And there's obstacles that get in the way of it, which certainly offers some, some fun movie mechanics to the film at times. Sure. Sure. Um, But then you also think about how she's able to tap into Halapa in a way that he isn't able to for himself. Yeah. So that adds another element to the ending of the film that just adds more texture to that joyous feeling that you have. She's she, she's very um assertive towards him yeah. uh, with regard to his alcoholism and tells a very clear story of someone in her life that suffered from it and that she won't be with someone that suffers from the same thing. And his response, as any alcoholic's response would probably be in the moment, is a very stubborn, well, screw you, I get to do what I want. Yeah. Uh, and, and it kind of shows this rift between them that's a very relatable kind of rift between any relationship, really. Uh, but I love that even early on, before they even really know each other's names, she has this assertive quality towards him that makes her very demanding and fun to watch. Uh, and that's another reason why I just yeah. really love 
Alma Poisty's performance here. Uh, like I said, yeah. th there, there's something just magnetic about her. Uh, and I, I think both the lead performances here are excellent. Uh, Juicy Vatanen is also really good too. But there is something about Poisty's performance that has this kind of hypnotic quality. Uh, that assertiveness is definitely part of it as well. But when she just simply lingers on screen without saying anything, especially when she's alone in her apartment in those early scenes, it's it weirdly carries this deadpan kind of comedy that we're talking about while also being really sad. Like she yeah. somehow gets both of those things balanced out right. Yes. Uh, like, yeah. Which is like, that doesn't sound like, a possibility. <laughs> it just sounds like an like, like something that no one could do. And somehow she does them both sometimes within seconds of each other. It's really effective. I agree. No, I think she does such a great job of embodying this loneliness, but also this hope that mm -hmm. arrives when Halapa enters her life in a certain way. Mm hmm. Which is interesting given that assertiveness that you're talking about. Like, even though he might symbolize a little bit of hope for her, or at least some much needed change early on in the film, it's incredibly dour where she comes home after, you know, working at this supermarket. She puts in this mm -hmm. food, which we come to find out is probably expired given the oh, scene yeah. that takes place yeah. afterwards. But she puts in this food. She takes it out of the microwave. It looks absolutely nasty. She immediately <laughs> throws it in the garbage. Yeah. And just, just walks nope. back to yep, the couch. Screw this. And you're sitting there, think, you know, thinking about <laughs> just how awful her life must be. So, uh, and I do love how the film demonstrates that. So even with Halapo, perhaps bringing something new, something uh, different for her. She's still not going to back down from those convictions. Yeah. And, and, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's one of the things I love and sorry to cut you off, but especially in the case of Ansa, you can, I don't think you could really say many of these characters have, the clearest defined arcs like there's not really much of a change with these characters i feel like if anything it's really just their circumstances and their relationships that change if anything this movie is about the start of potential change right yeah uh and, and it, it, it's not quite that circular arc that i tend to love from a lot of characters in movies when they yeah. when they change but then they revert back to where they started so that way they end they end the, the they end where they began in some ways that is kind of what happens here. And and I, I, I kind of like that the growth is very subtle. It's very slow. It's it's not that well defined because it's not meant to be. It's really the, the start of that new definition. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of love the simplicity of it. I know you yeah. mentioned that earlier. I think the arc of Halapa is the most defined here. I agree. And perhaps has the biggest curvature to it. Yeah. But this film isn't trying to be some sort of insightful, engrossing drama, you know, no, no the, the, drama like this. Yeah. This is a really funny film, as we talked about. And honestly, it's it's just these two characters who find themselves isolated and, you know, living these sad lives for different reasons who yeah. find that together there might be some hope there. And there's a billion different obstacles to get in the way, which yeah. comes with a lot of humor, a lot of great irony, and them simply trying to overcome it, which is yeah. why I sense Chaplin, because that's how a lot of his films mechanically work as well. Mm -hmm. When you think of something like City Lights and how they end up together there at the end of that film, like this is doing something very similarly. And um, and, and so like, I don't know if the arcs of these characters have to be anything ravishing. I just love the simplicity. It's their loneliness and they're trying to fill that void. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned city lights, the, uh, circumstances of Ansa kind of reminds me a bit more of modern times. 
uh, at least from the female perspective, you know, kind of thinking like yeah. where that character could end up being sure. afterwards if she yeah. never met the tramp. Uh, yeah. But you're, but the whole point is that, yeah, this movie is invoking a lot of classic movie traits and narratives, especially with regard to two people meeting the meet cute movie of old, right? That's where yeah. brief encounter is referenced. There's a poster of it in this movie somewhere. Um, Jean-Luc Godard is referenced as well. This movie does yeah. have a fondness for French new wave of all things while yeah. making of, of almost making a plot line out of that Jim Jarmusch film <laughs> it yeah. is yeah. absolutely amazing. No, oh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's, it is amazing how this is a medley of Jim Jarmusch, French New Wave and Charlie Chaplin. That's such a weird. <laughs> that doesn't sound like it's supposed to work. <laughs> no, and it yeah, it does. And I think that's what's so fascinating is you have this very simple comedic movie. It's very dry, but the aesthetics and the way it's shot, like the cinematography, I don't know how else to describe it you know, without getting extremely technical about it, it mm -hmm. it feels like it, like the footage is from the 1960s. You know what it all, you know what it reminded me of? And this is not a reference in the movie. This is just a comparison that I'm making, uh, in relation to the way that this movie looks, but it almost had like this cloudy dystopian vibe that was kind of reminiscent of something like, uh, Andre Tarkovsky's stalker. Uh, like it, like it almost had this otherworldly kind of vibe to it. It just felt very ugly. It almost made it seem like a nuclear explosion had just gone off in the distance, yeah. and we're seeing the ramifications of it in modern day Helsinki. Uh, like, like, like if um if if the film's uh, writer and director uh, Aki Kurosaki were to come out and say, yeah, this movie takes place in a what if world where an atomic bomb went off. <laughs> it's like this is the ramifications of it. it's like you know what i don't think you're wrong it's it just yeah. it, it has that ugliness to it and from a bygone era i mean the yeah. only thing that suggests this is modern is the, the war in ukraine war. yeah that's it but again that's why i go back to my opening thoughts and my interpretation there because you know, I, I I do love that irony that this and, and it's very purposeful because the film goes yeah. back to it like three or four different times. This radio broadcast about the war in Ukraine. So we know this takes place in the modern day. Yeah. Do, However, nothing yeah. about it aesthetically looks modern. She's using she she's finding this out from a radio broadcast. There's no television yeah. around. There's no news broadcast in any sort of modern sense her apartment her clothing attire it all is from a bygone era so what is the film trying to say in all of that well that's where i think the film's commentary on class becomes very compelling to me but that is the backdrop of the movie it's in the yeah, background it's, it's it's certainly not in the foreground but i love how the film again is able to to eat, have both of those things. I'm trying to remember, like, do we even see other forms of modern technology to suggest that this takes place in modern day? Like, like, I mean, do we see automobiles in this? I don't think so. Other than the police car, right? Where the one. Yeah. But even that is arrested, but even that seems like it might be kind of like, uh, it, it, it kind of vague as far as where and when, that design of automobile could have taken place. Yeah. I mean, we do see some, some of it on the construction sites, uh, yeah. during, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Jalapa's job hunts and some of the, some of the odd jobs that he lands. A lot of it is in construction. Yeah. So we see some of the tech there, but, or, some, or, yeah. or even with onset at the end, she's like working in like some factory or something. Yeah. But, there, but there's not much to suggest that this is contemporary. You're well, right. That's the thing. Like those mechanics, the factories, the construction, that doesn't suggest 2023. That no. all existed in 1962. That, that blue collar kind of work existed from the 1950s into the 1970s, 80. Like that, yeah. that still exists today. That is yeah. not out of the realm of possibility of this being in olden times. Yeah. I mean, exactly. The only thing that suggests 2023 is the war in Ukraine. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, and the fact that the synopsis tells us that, I love that juxtaposition. That's Same. fascinating to me. Same. And, and and then you couple that with 
these destitute characters just longing for togetherness yeah. to remedy their own loneliness. Fantastic. Joyous, yeah. lovely, wonderful cinema scene. Long live that moment forever. I can't wait to watch this movie again. It's so good. <laughs> so, so, so good. And yes, I feel validated. This film absolutely validates my opinions on that Jarmish film. <laughs> It's the best. <laughs> I really want to say what it is, but I, I, I no. don't want to give it away for those who are not only familiar with Jim Jarmusch, but do want to see this movie Fallen Leaves. And that's another thing too, right? Because that's a little modern, but not 2023, not during the war in Ukraine. So that's another mm-hmm. interesting time capsule element of this film where this movie is not new within the last three years it is no it's it's new ish but it's pre-covid it's pre-covid let's just put it that way <laughs> so again that just makes like why would that be playing in cinemas <laughs> like you know what i mean like how did they get access to that like that's what makes the whole time travel component of this film so <laughs> so interesting that's yeah man i'm just good movie. I, I i yeah it's a great movie Great movie. Yeah. Uh, did you, before we get to final thoughts, did you want to talk about uh, what's his name? Um, yes, I yeah. want to talk about Jan Hatainen. H- Jan Hatainen. I think that's the best way we can describe his name. Hutori. I'm probably butchering that, but he mm-hmm. is Halapa's friend here. Yeah. And I think he is also extremely funny in this film. The karaoke he's, scene where he's basically really saying funny. he truly believes that he is going to get signed as a music artist. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, he's like, just watch me. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to nail this number. And he sings. He's just singing at a karaoke bar. Yeah. He does. But yeah, the rest of the film, he's like, I'm going to get signed. But then, then doesn't someone else come up after him? And they're clearly yeah. better. <laughs> it's, it's just so good. Like, yeah, that whole sequence is hilarious. But every every exchange they have at the film, there's one between him and Ansa that's also humorous yeah. as well. Like, I understand the the... The central dynamic here is Hlop and Ansa, and it's great for all the reasons we talked about, but I loved yeah. that supporting role here. So yeah. good. Well, there's there's a little bit of loneliness in him as well. Uh, like, like yeah. Even despite the humor, he might be the quote-unquote funniest character in the movie, at least, you know, literally speaking. very, very yeah. At face value, definitely the funniest character. Still but, dry, but yeah, very, very funny. And, yeah. and you're right, because when he gets off stage there, he tries to hit on Ansa's friend and she yeah. Yeah, essentially says no. Mm-hmm. And she but later on in the film, when he meets up with Ansa, he's trying to rekindle that potential romantic yeah. thing there. So and there, there's there's something in the way that eyes that like the like, like people's eyes are captured here that just suggests such loneliness. And all three of these main performances here, the ones that we've been talking most about, uh, uh, Poisty, Vitanen, and and uh, I'm gonna butcher this so badly, uh, Heitinen. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All three of them, they just know how to convey sadness without yeah. telling us that they're sad. Yeah, and and, yep. and 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 they all do a great job at it. So good. And then there's of course Alma the dog as Chaplin the dog. Which is also uh, adorable. Well, and and there's the music to this film. I was not kidding when I said this is yeah. kind of a musical at it times. Uh, I mean, th- th- every single music performance that we see here is very literally describing the moment, it the, is. the scene, yeah. the moment, the emotionality of the moment, uh, and some of them being real music artists from Finland as well. So there is kind of a meta component to it as well that I really appreciated. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I, I, it's functioning on many layers without really doing any of those things. Very, very head on. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I like movies that do that. I really it's do. Good. good movie. I highly recommend it. I don't know if it's going to get into best international film at the Oscars, but it's, it'll be it's in ours. There is one of the better, uh, it was one of the best foreign films of the year. There's no doubt about it though. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm with you. I'm it. with you. So, at any rate, those are our thoughts on Fallen Leaves. Uh, if 
you agree or disagree with anything we had to say here, please let us know. Leave a comment on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can hit us up uh, via email in sessionfilm at gmail.com. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment below. Let us know yeah. what you think of Fallen Leaves. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, all that fun stuff. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, write and review us there. It really helps out the show quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else, Brendan, before we get out of here? I want to watch this movie again. I think we're going to do that before I go to bed. Okay. Well, there you go. It is <laughs> short enough. A good 80 <laughs> minutes. It's. And, uh, I, need, I, I need to feel happy. I need to feel happy yeah. again. This, well, this conversation will, made me happy. It's And it is... You know, obviously, I guess I don't get, want to give too much away, but there's there's a bunch of obstacles that get in the way, and it just leaves you thirsting for more, thirsting for these characters to find a way before it resolves mm-hmm. that at the end, and it just leaves you in an emotion that uh, it ju- it's just the best feeling. I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's a great so feeling. Good. It's a great Absolutely feeling. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, joyous movie. Really like it a lot. Uh, and go Chaplin the dog. Yep, yep. That's my final thought. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on the In Session Film Podcast. <sighs> oh, Movies man. are good. Movies are good. Yeah. I'm a poisty. Happy for her Globe nomination. Oh, watch her reaction. It's so good. <laughs>